All right, everybody. Welcome to the notes on two seven. This is about absolute value functions and their graphs. So we've looked at uh, we've looked at some graphs and transformations, and we've looked at absolute values. And so now we're going to kind of combine those two things and look um, take a look at how we can graph absolute value functions. Okay. Um, there's a family of functions related to the one you represented in the solve it. Okay. Um, here's the deal. There's a family of uh, functions specifically for absolute value. And so just like with the linear functions, the, the parent function was y equals x. And for quadratic functions, the parent function was y equals x squared. Uh, the parent function for absolute value functions is this. It's y equals, uh, or f of x equals the absolute value of x. Okay. Um, here's what that looks like. And this is really important to understand. Um, you can't have any negative values. So when we put in negative 3 into the table, we get positive 3. So we go there, and then, you know, we put a point. Negative 2 gives us positive 2. Negative 1 gives us positive 1. 0 obviously gives us 0. And then 1 gives us 1, and 2 gives us 2. So nothing can ever be down here in the parent function, okay? Uh, there is, is an axis of symmetry, which you've learned about um, in geometry, where it's a, a line down the middle where we can kind of cut it in half, and it's the same on both sides. Um, and it has a vertex similar to, like, an angle. So it's a, it has our calculator, we'll refer to it as a maximum or a minimum. Um, but the big thing is that we know that an absolute value function is going to have a vertex in this sort of, like, V shape, and we'll learn how that can be transformed. So, uh, the easiest way to graph um, any absolute value function is to understand uh, the table of values. It's the best tool, best weapon we have basically for everything we do in this class that involves a graph. So what's the graph of the absolute value of the function y equals the absolute value of x minus 4? And how is this graph different from the parent function? Well, we put in values, so you put in negative 3 right here and you get positive 3, minus 4, and you get negative 1. So you do each one of those. And then we see that uh, the, the answer is uh, similar to the parent function, except for it's been shifted down four units. And some of you might have predicted that, that was coming because we have this minus four here. And you remember from the last section that we talked about transformations. And a, a minus four like that will shift it down. So same as the parent function, just been shifted down four units. Okay. Let's take a look at the got it right here. What is the graph of the function y equals the absolute value of x plus 2? And how is this graph different from the parent function? Well, let's answer the question first. How is this graph different from the parent function? Anybody want to take that one? Yeah, go ahead. Very good. OK, it's been shifted up uh, two units. OK, it's been shifted up two units. OK. Now, what does the graph look like? Well, very simply, uh, you, can, you guys can just sketch this um, so we don't have to do too much work. Okay? And, you know, the apparent function is just going to be a, that, that same v. So up two units would be here. So 0, 2, and then one, negative 1, 3, and positive 1, 3. And it's going to look pretty much like that. Okay, and again, that's just a sketch. If you want graph paper, you can go to the class webpage. There's some graph paper that you can print off. Question two says, do transformations of the form y equals the absolute value of x plus k affect the axis of symmetry? And explain. I'm going to pause the video here. I want you to think about that for a second. At least pause the video for five seconds, for God's sakes. Think about it, and, uh, and let me know what you get. Okay, pause the video now. So here's what I got. Um, I said no. Uh, and the reason is because the transformations of this kind are just going to translate it up and down. They're going to move the vertex up and down along the axis. Um, like this one moved down, this one moved up. But the axis of symmetry will stay the same. Okay. So uh, again, key concept here. Um, this, this basically takes the last unit of... Um, transformations and relates it to absolute value. So plus and minus are going to shift it up and down, just like it, a vertical translation. Um, inside the absolute value are going to shift it left and right, just like the transformations we did previously. Vertical stretch and compression, again, the exact same. And reflection, the exact same, okay? Um, so this, this, if you understood the last unit, this should help. If you didn't, hopefully this kind of helps reinforce some of the stuff that we did there. 
So let's take a look at combining transformations. So which which of these uh, which of the following graphs is uh, the graph of y equals x plus two plus three? Okay, the absolute value of x plus two, and then that plus three. So let's think about this before we even look at the choices. Let's think. Okay, it's a plus on the inside, so it's going to move left two. Okay, and then it's a plus three, so it's going to move up two. So if, if the parent function started at the origin, uh, this, this goes down, so we can eliminate that one. This one goes down, so we can eliminate that one. This one here, these both go up. This one goes uh, right two and up three. Um, that's no good. Uh, oh, whoopsie daisy. This said two. I meant three. You knew I meant three. Uh, so we're going to go left two and then up three, so our answer is D, okay? That's our answer. All right. Um, what about this? What is the graph of y equals the absolute value of x minus two plus one? So what would that look like? Uh, for this one, I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little little help here. Okay. Uh, pause the video. Try and graph that one, and I'll give it to you with a better graph this time. Pause the video now. All right. So here's my answer. Um, and nice and pretty this time. So uh, the minus 2, I know that I started at the origin, that's going to move it 2 to the right, and then the plus 1 is going to move it up 1, and so there's my vertex, and so then that's how I get, yikes, that's how I get my, that's how I get my answer there, okay? Um, minus makes this go right, we talked about that in class, about how that's counterintuitive, but um, that's how the numbers make it work out, so. All right, uh, the, the right branch of the graph y equals the absolute value of x has a slope of 1. The graph of y equals a times the absolute value of x is a stretch or compression. Okay, Because it is stretch or, or, or compression, um, it's going to affect the slope. Okay, um, So that's one thing. It, it's right branch. That right there, that number out in front, actually is the slope. So, you know, when we have... The original one, this has a slope, you guys can see, or the one we just did, has a slope of 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. And as we can apply a com stretch or compression to it, that number out front becomes the slope of that right side. Okay? Uh, the graph of y equals negative a times the absolute value of x is a reflection of a times the absolute value of x in the x-axis, and its right branch has a slope of negative a. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay? So here, uh, we have a graph, uh, it's a vertical compression of one half, okay? Um, so what does it look like? Well, we go to the original parent function, and instead of, you know, we have a point at the vertex, and instead of going up one over one, uh, we now have a slope of one half. So I'm gonna go up one over two, and up one over two. The nice part about absolute value functions is that because they're symmetrical, if I know that the line of reflection Okay, that the line of reflection is the y-axis. What I'm able to do is, is I'm able to use the y-axis as a line of reflection, the same way we did in geometry class. So I have this line of reflection here, and if I go to my new points that I made, okay, what I can do is I can just count how many spaces to the line of reflection and then go the same in the opposite side. So I can say, you know, one, two, and then one, two on the other side. And that's how I can graph that side of the, the absolute value function. So four, so four, okay? And then once I do that, then I can, I can draw my line, all right? So much easier if we use the line of reflection to graph one side, and then so there's that, and there's that, and you can see, yeah, I graphed it. Okay, uh, let's take, let's give you guys a, a shot at graphing 2a and 2b. What would those two graphs look like? Go ahead and pause the video here and graph those. All right, I haven't graphed them yet. Uh, I just got it set up. I, I'm hoping you did so that we can actually take a look at these. Um, so I know that 0, 0 is a point, okay? And then this one now, I know that that now has the right side has a slope of 2, okay? So I'm going to go up 2 over 1 up 2 over 1. I can do that as many times as I want. And then I know that the y-axis is my line of reflection. So I can just use that. This is 2, so it's 2 more over here. That's 3, so it's 3 more over here. So I can use that as a means of graphing the other side. All right. And then I'm going to take my ruler. Uh, hopefully you have some kind of straight edge. If you don't have a straight edge, you can borrow one from me in class when we have sort of you know, assessment type things if you're worried about 
um, not being able to draw straight lines because that is important. Okay, and then I've got that, and I'll say, ah, uh, yeah, 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 I moved it. There we go. So there's that, and then I'll move it to the other side. Now, what you'll notice about this, again, is that it looks, it has that V shape, it has a vertex at zero, zero, okay, um, and that should make it easy to draw, okay, so there's that, um, it goes forever, so I'm going to put the arrows at the end of it, this one, that's what yikes, should I get my ruler out? Okay, so now let's take a look at b equals negative two-thirds x. If you're ever not sure, you can always just make a table of values, okay, so let's go ahead and do the table of values just as good practice here to see what we actually get. Okay, so when let's pick let's pick five points, and these are the most common, easiest to pick. So um, now, ooh, good point here. They are the most common and easiest to pick, but they're not going to be the best ones for this because of the fraction. So I'm actually going to pick some different points. I'm going to pick things that have a multiple of three, so that when I multiply them by two thirds, it comes out to a nice neat number. Okay, so when x is negative 6, negative 6 times negative 2 thirds is, anybody, it's positive 4, okay? Now, here's the thing, it's not negative times that, so watch what happens. Because it's a negative 6 inside the absolute value, it becomes positive 6, so that's negative 2 thirds, now it's times positive 6, and that becomes negative 4. This negative out in front is going to show us that we can make this absolute value function actually look much different than we expected. So let's take a look at negative 4. Okay? Negative 3 becomes positive 3. Right? Negative 3 becomes positive 3. And then 3 times negative 2 thirds is negative 2. 0 is 0. That one's easy. Uh, 3 gives us negative 2 again, and 6 gives us negative 4 again. So look what happens. We have, uh, we have our, our origin right here. And then we have negative 6, negative 4. So we're actually going to have an absolute value function that is now upside down. Okay? Uh, we have negative 3, negative 2. So there's that. And then I can use the line of reflection again to get these. Or you could use the slope uh, to get those. And then, so let's take a look at what our graph looks like. Okay? Um, so we have an absolute value function going in this direction. Because that the, the A out in front of it, not only did this compress it, but it reflected it in the x-axis. Okay? Alright, throw my ruler away. Alright, let's take a look at what's next. If you have questions on those, make sure you write something down so that we can talk about them in class. So we can combine the equations for stretches and compressions with the equations for translations to write a general form for absolute value functions. So this is the big general form, okay? Uh, the stretch or compression factor is A. H is whether it moves uh, left or right. K is whether it moves up or down. And when I say the it, I'm talking about the vertex. And the line, uh, the axis of symmetry is the line x equals h. So if we move it left or right, the axis of symmetry is going to change, okay? But th this is, I would know this. Take note. It even says, take note. Take note, guys. So uh, problem four, identified, identifying transformations. Without graphing, what are the vertex and axis of symmetry of the graph of y equals 3 times absolute value of x minus 2 plus 4, and how is the, tra the parent function transformed? All right. So let's look at how the parent function is transformed first. We know that it's been stretched 3, it's been shifted right 2, and up 4. Okay? So just by looking at it, we know that. All right? Then, what's the new vertex? Well, the new vertex is at 2, 4. Okay? So there's that. And the axis of symmetry is x equals 2. That's it. So let's do this one together. Let's look at number 4. What's happened to it? Let's do what's happened to it first. How has it been transformed? Okay? So how has that been transformed? Take a second and think about it. How has that been transformed? Okay? What does the negative do to it? Think about that. Think about these negatives. Take a second, pause the video, think about it, and then I'll walk you through it. All right, so let's look at it one thing at a time. The negative out in front reflects it over the x-axis, reflected over the x. It's been this 2 right here 
uh, it's been stretched by two. Okay, uh, this one inside translates it right one, and this negative three outside translates it down three. All right, so a lot going on on that one. And then what is the new vertex? Well, the new vertex is what is the new vertex? The new vertex is one negative three. And the axis of symmetry is x equals 1. OK? No problemo. Now, can we do that in the opposite direction? Can we take a problem like number 5 and get the picture, and then from the picture, decide what the equation is? OK? So here's how you do this. First, you're going to identify the vertex, because the vertex is going to give you the h and the k. So if the vertex is at negative 1, right there, then you know that, uh, well, you, let's just jot some things down. You know that the vertex is negative 1, 4. We'll come back to that. Identify A. That's the slope of the right side, okay? So the slope of everything from this way. So it's down 1 over 3. So that's negative 1 third. So that's how we know that. So write the equation. This should be easy enough. We have y equals negative 1 third Okay, here's where the vertex comes in. Because it's a negative 1, it's a plus on the inside. So it's x plus 1, and up 4 puts it outside as plus 4. Easy enough. Okay, so let's walk through this one right here. What's the vertex? The vertex is 2, negative 1, right? And then what's a? a is, if there's a point here, and there's a point here, it looks like a is 1 fourth. Okay, so we're ready to write it. It's y equals 1 fourth times x. Because we went to, shifted to the right, it's a minus, and we shifted 2. And then we shifted down 1, so it's a minus 1 on the outside. And that's it, guys. OK? Um, that's all for the notes. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, if you were struggling with transformations last time, this helped you. If you're still struggling, I would suggest going back and watching the transformations notes again and seeing if that doesn't help you understand these a little bit better. Um, I've really enjoyed this. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in class on Tuesday.